now you can see the leads actually shrunk down a little bit there so now I have a beautiful slug filling this and since this seems to be around the right size we should have no problem driving it through the barrel so I'm going to load this into the bullet puller and if any of you guys don't have one of these if you're into reloading of course you've probably already got one they're a lifesaver so now I'm going to smack that lead out. I've had some that take 60 hits, some that come out in 5. And it's out. So now you can see, it's a little bit out of focus, you can see that we've got a nice slug tapered on the front. You can actually see the swedge marks as it came out of the brass on the back. And what I've done is uh, cut this little tit off the front only because I'm a perfectionist and I like everything neat. But for right now we're just going to go ahead and drive this through the barrel. On the back it's actually slightly dimpled in the center which actually you know makes it much easier to get your dowel centered and drive it into the barrel. So let's go ahead and put this through our barrel. Now this is a stainless steel barrel, brand new gun, 650 bucks. Obviously we don't want to mar it. I'm going to use the lead anvil keeping it nice and flat on here. As you can see we set that in there. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see it's almost perfectly fit. You don't want to tap on this without putting the dowel rod on because what you're going to do is you're actually going to mushroom it out. So I'm going to hold the dowel rod on here and drive it in with a kinetic bullet puller because you don't need a whole lot of force. And I'm going to show you as we progress how nicely this fits. Some guys are talking about having to cram these through and beating on them and they get stuck. And that was some of my fears and that's why I'm showing you this video. Now I'm using the kinetic bullet puller as my hammer. So you can see here, I'm not using a lot of force. This is just a little plastic mallet. And I'm going to show you when we get to the very, very last part of entering the barrel. You can see it's actually filling the barrel completely. I am off-centered a little bit on the side. That's not, not a problem, of course, because we're nice soft lead here. And what I'm really trying to get at here is to show you the little ring that clips off at the point of when we entered the barrel and why this slug gave me such a good fit that I was so happy with this. You can see right there, use my screwdriver, there's a beautiful little ring of lead that came off the top of this, perfectly round little ring. So you know that we've actually entered the barrel fully, all the way around. And now here's one of the things I wanted to discuss was, with a barrel, you're going to want to do both ends of the barrel, where it enters the rifling and at the end of the muzzle. I found with this Beretta, because it's only a 5 inch barrel, that I'm not having any deviations in the barrel. Some guys have reported where the stamping is of the caliber size on rifles, that you actually have a small spot on a revolver where the barrel is screwed into the frame. Uh, a lot of times apparently they get swedged down and you got a real tight neck area in there, which can give you many difficulties if you're firing lead, because you want to get a proper size so you don't get blow by. So I'm going to show you. Initially, I was only going to pound this in maybe an inch and pound it back out as per the instructions. But what I found was when I entered the barrel, I could nearly drive this through with my hand. 
all the way down and I have the same amount of resistance which means my barrel isn't really changing much size. So we're going to knock it out. Knock it out with the palm of my hand. Let's show you the finished product. So now you can see the little tit still on the one that we've just produced and some beautiful rifling marks. One of the things I was kind of surprised with is how shallow the riflings on a Beretta are. You know, I have been looking at my 3030 and I see some deep riflings. If you look at this, some very shallow. So now I went and I take, uh, go ahead and put this in my dial caliper, which I'm actually not going to measure right now because we don't need to. We've done two already. But I'll give you a nice show here of the flats on the dial indicator. You can go ahead and you can measure a beautiful flat section and how uh, what I ended up with is a barrel diameter of 356 thousandths of an inch and I really thought this was a much better technique than running a round ball through your barrel. I'd uh, appreciate it if you guys would give me some video feedbacks. Um, I'd like to show you on my left here uh, I have a lime incisor and that's what started this whole thing. So I'm going to uh, start casting my bullets. If you guys would like to give me some video input on uh, the technique that I've shown you, hopefully this will help some people out. I found it to be much, much better than some of the uh, other techniques that have been shown to me. And this was really all about how to uh, actually make the slug and not so much as slugging and sizing the barrel. But as you can see, it works out well. Hope you enjoy this. Thank you.